Welcome back everyone to our example one video for the shell method. Uh, in our last video, we just did the intro about where the formula comes from. So if you wanna go back and check that out before you do these, you get an idea of how the formula is generated. Uh, here we're going to be revolving uh, this particular region that you see here about the y-axis. So we're gonna go ahead and revolve spinning this way. Uh, we'll give you an idea of what the volume looks like uh, so if you take this and you revolve about Y, we actually get something that looks like maybe a, a bunt pan or something that you might bake with. And each of the layers that we're building the volume with are cylindrical shells, uh, just the lateral surface area of those cylinders. So that's what we'll be doing. And we're going to revolve about Y. And since we know we are revolving about Y, remember with the shell method, we always take our rectangle and we will be drawing our rectangles or our layers parallel to the axis of revolution in the shell method. So I went ahead and drew my rectangle parallel to this axis. Since it's running up and down this way, we know that we are going to be integrating dx. So we know for sure that our volume formula will be of the form two pi integral from a to b. And remember we have radius that will be as a function of x and then height will also be a function of x dx so that's the formula we're going to use based on the direction of the rectangle it's always the first thing you want to do so we'll have to figure out what is the radius and what is the height so the height remember is always basically the long way of the rectangle the length of the rectangle is the height so this distance from here to here is just simply going to be, since the bottom one is the axis, it's just going to be whatever the value of the function is. And since this one here at the top is the parabola, y equals 2x minus x squared, 2x minus x squared minus zero, of course, is just gonna give us this formula here. So this is our height. This is our h of x. We'll go ahead and plug that in there. And then the question is, what is the radius in terms of x? Well, the radius is, remember, however far any rectangle is from the axis of revolution. And in this case, how far is this rectangle? Well, it's whatever x value we are at, right? This distance, whatever the x value is at this rectangle, that would be how far it is. Remember, you wouldn't want to just pick, oh, this looks like 1.3. The idea is you need a rule for any rectangle you would draw through the region. And so if I drew it over here or really close to the axis or way out here, it would still be the distance from the axis of revolution would be the x value. So this value is going to be x for our radius. So that is our r of x. We go ahead and plug in and get two pi. Integral, we'll do our bounds last. So the radius is x. And our height function is the 2x minus x squared. We'll integrate that dx. Let's go back and look at our bounds. So if it's dx, these are x bounds. So I simply need to go from here over to here and get all the layers in there. So this is at x equals 0, and this is at x equals 2. I went ahead and labeled it ahead of time. So my bounds are from 0 to 2. Okay, so to do this integral, we won't do anything crazy as far as trying to do some sort of a product rule. Uh, what we'll do here is just simply distribute the x, and then everything will work out very nicely. So we'll have 2 pi integral from 0 to 2, and we will be integrating 2x squared minus x cubed dx. Okay, so just power rules there. Let's go ahead and do that. So 2 pi, completing the integral, we will get x cubed over 3. We already have a 2, so that'll become 2 thirds x cubed. Minus power rule here, we get x to the 4 over 4, 1 fourth x to the 4. And then we will be plugging in 0 and 2 as our bounds. So for this one here, let's plug in 2 first. We'll get 2 pi, start my bracket. So plugging in 2, I would get 2 thirds times 2 cubed, which would be 8, minus 1 fourth times 2 to the fourth, which is 16, minus, if I plug in 0, I will get 0 for the first term, and I will also get 0 for the second term, so those do not contribute anything. 
and let's go ahead and simplify a bit here. So we have 2 pi, 2 thirds times 8 would be 16 thirds, minus 16 over 4, that's 4. And then we could still combine like terms there, I think, right? So if we're not sure, then maybe we make a common denominator, and we would say 16 thirds minus 12 thirds. And then that would be 2 pi times 4 thirds, which would give us a volume of 8 pi over 3. And it would be volumes always in units cubed. So we would have 8 pi over 3 units cubed for the volume of this solid. Okay, we've got another example. Check out our example 2 video for the shell method. We'll see you in the next one.